Hello everyone, Mr. Waz here and welcome to another episode of Wazley Science. Today we are going to be talking about the rock cycle. Alright, before we get to rocks we really need to think simple here. So we're going to first talk about atoms, elements, and compounds. Atoms are the smallest unit that defines the chemical elements. These are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. You talked about them last year. So you can look at the diagram down here and you can see some examples here of an atom. This is a copper atom, this is a zinc atom, and then this is a aluminum atom. And each of these are different elements. An element is a certain kind of atom that has a very specific amount of protons. So zinc has 30 protons. Zinc is the only element that has 30 protons. If it has one less proton, then it's copper. Copper has 29 protons. And aluminum has 13. Now you can also see here that copper has 29 electrons by counting up all these little gray circles in their different electron shells. And then copper has one electron on its very outside shell. Zinc has two electrons and aluminum has three electrons on its outside shell. And that outside shell is very important and it depicts how this element is going to bond with another element. And then there are compounds. Compounds are a combination of two or more atoms and they can be the same element sometimes and sometimes they can be two different elements that have bonded together. Here are some examples. You have H2 which is two hydrogens bonded together. You have two oxygens that are bonded together. This is the oxygen in our, in our atmosphere as well as the nitrogen in our atmosphere. And then we have chlorine. But then we have NO which is nitrogen oxide. H2O which is water of course. NO2 nitrogen dioxide. And CO2 which is carbon dioxide. So these are two different elements that have bonded together. And there are three atoms total and then two different elements, two oxygens, one carbon, and carbon dioxide. Now a mineral is a naturally occurring inorganic solid with an orderly crystalline structure and in definite com chemical composition. To put this in simple terms, it's just what makes up of a rock. It's the building blocks of a rock. Now this slide may be funny to you because it is says, what is a rock? and it seems like that's really easy to define but I'm sure if I asked you to define a rock you wouldn't really know. So a rock is any solid mass or mineral or mineral-like mineral matter that occurs naturally as a part of our planet. Rocks can be composed of just one mineral or they can be a solid mixture of multiple minerals. Alright so let's put this all together with an example that we're familiar with. So starting from the left we have three elements calcium oxygen and carbon so you can see what they look like here here's our calcium atom and it's got all of its protons neutrons and electrons here's our oxygen and here's our carbon now if we combine calcium with one carbon and three oxygens we will have calcium carbonate which is what we talked about when we talked about weathering and erosion Calcium carbonate is a compound that comes from um, ancient plankton from millions of years ago and have eventually they become compressed through geologic formation and become the mineral known as either calcite, argonite, or uh, vitrite. And calcite is the most common one that we see. Most of the stable mineral that we see is calcite. So then when it becomes even compressed even more and mixed in with other things we have the rock that we know very well limestone. So limestone is mostly cal um, calcium carbonate it's like 93 percent calcium carbonate but it also has aluminum oxide and iron oxide and some other things. So Limestone comes from calcite. Calcite comes from calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is composed of calcium, oxygen, and carbon. So that kind of puts elements and atoms and compounds and minerals and rocks all together on one slide for you. There are three types of rocks. 
The first rock is the igneous rock, which if you think of the keyword ignite, which means fire. So igneous rocks come from volcanoes through magma and heat in and cool in. And then we have the metamorphic rocks, which meta and morphic mean to transform, to change. Metamorphic rocks involve heat and pressure. And metamorphic rocks often have foliated layers and bands on them. You can see in the picture in the middle there, you can see the bands of the metamorphic rock. And then you have sedimentary rocks, which involve weathering and erosion. You can think of sediment, which you probably think of something to do with water or the sand on the bottom of the ocean. So sedimentary involves weathering and erosion. The rock cycle is a continuous process that causes rocks to change. When you see a rock on the ground, you should realize that that rock hasn't always been that rock, and that rock will not always be that rock. It will go through changes forever. These changes occur due to interactions among the Earth's water, air, land, and living things that cause the rocks to change from one type to another. This cycle takes place over a very, very long period of time. Here's a very simplified version of the rock cycle. I think this one is very helpful, and I would highly recommend that you draw it right now on your notes. So you can see the main types of rocks, the igneous, the sedimentary, and the metamorphic. And what you should notice here is that rocks can, it's not just one simple cycle, Rocks can really go in any direction from any point. A rock could start out in the magma, and then it could cool down and, and become an igneous rock. And then through weathering and erosion, it could become some sediment, and then become compacted and cemented into a sedimentary rock. And then through heat and pressure, it could become a metamorphic rock, and then get melted back into magma, and so on. But that's not just what could happen here. You can have magma cool into an igneous rock and then melt back to magma and then cool into an igneous rock and then melt back into magma. And a rock could just do that for millions of years and not really ever experience the rest of the rock cycle. It could also experience heat and pressure right from an igneous rock and then become a metamorphic rock and then get weathered and eroded into a sediment. So what you should really notice here is that there's just many directions and possibilities for the rocks to go throughout the 4.6 billion years that Earth has existed. Here's another really useful diagram. So now you can kind of see a portion of the Earth's crust and how this works. So here you have the magma and you can have some uplift and some some melting and then cool in into the igneous rocks and they can eventually make themselves at the top of some sort of mountain of some sort and then you have weathering and then transportation erosion until it reaches the ocean and then gets buried and cemented into a sedimentary rock and then you can have some heat and pressure so you know like a subduction zone or something with some heat and pressure and can become a metamorphic rock. And then it can get pushed down and heated up to the point when it goes back into the magma and then you got yourself an igneous rock. And you can follow along these arrows and really see how what I mean when a rock rocks don't just have a certain pathway they have to go. They really can go in all these interesting directions. You can have an igneous rock go through the heat and pressure and just be a mat a metamorphic rock and then go back down to the magma. You can have a sedimentary rock go straight to magma. So a lot of interesting things you can see from this diagram. You can also see some things from this diagram too. There's a little bit more detail, but you can really see how the cycle works itself out. With the heat and pressure, you go from sedimentary to metamorphic. You can go with heat and pressure, you can go from an igneous to metamorphic. With, with sedimentary rocks, it's always, it takes weathering and erosion to become the sediment, and then it takes compaction and sedimentation to become a sedimentary rock. And then for igneous rocks, it's always 
melting and cooling. So there's some key words there for the rock cycle. This diagram really shows how the movement of plate tectonics drive the rock cycle. I would definitely try your best to draw this diagram if you can. Um, so what you see here is just what I was talking about before. You have the melting and cooling which makes the igneous rocks and then erosion and transportation becomes breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces through abrasion and becomes sedimentary rocks and then it gets compacted on top of each other which makes it into that sedimentary rock and then you see here that there's a subduction zone well there's so much pressure there that you know that's where like we talked about that's where earthquakes are occurring that's where one plate is sinking below another plate just imagine the massive amount of pressure that's there that's what makes our metamorphic rocks and sometimes those metamorphic rocks can just be uplifted and other times they get melted down below the lithosphere into the athenosphere and then they get melted into magma and crystallization occurs so i hope that you are now seeing how the rock cycle really can go in a lot of interesting in different directions dependent on the path if you are struggling remembering these things you can think of the acronym i study so much magma so the i represents igneous rocks the what the first s would represent sediments and then the second s would represent sed the sedimentary rock and then you have the metamorphic rock and last you have the magma and then from the magma you go back to the igneous rock so if you want to think of it in a very simple straightforward order you can think of the I study so much magma so because that would take you for a full loop of the rock cycle which would touch upon everything one thing that I did not get into yet was what's magma magma is that molten material that forms deep beneath the earth in the mantle and then eventually comes up the athenosphere um, as a result of the Sub, of subduction zones which we discussed about in the plate tectonics um, video so you, you can go back to that and it'll explain that a little better so when this magma rises up to the crust from pressure it will cause a volcanic eruption and this is how igneous rocks form when magma reaches the surface it's no longer called magma it's called lava so that's what the difference between magma and lava is Magma is this molten rock that's when it's inside of the uh, lithosphere, athenosphere, or mantle. And lava is when you have the molten rock on the top of the Earth's crust exposed to the Earth's atmosphere. All right, so if you weren't able to write down notes while I was talking, here they are on the screen. I would take these bullets down. I'm just going to read them for you. But this is basically a summary for what I've been talking about in this video. So when rocks are at the Earth's surface, they can undergo weathering. And like we've said in a previous video, weathering is a process in which rocks are physically and chemically broken down through mechanical weathering, chem uh, chemical weathering like we talked about, by water and air and even living things. The pieces of Earth's materials that break off then are called sediments. And water, gravity, glaciers, wind can move these sediments from one place to another. That's, that's what erosion is. It's the transportation of that. So eventually the sediments get piled on top of one another. And with the pressure of maybe the ocean on top of it, it can get cemented and compacted to form a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks, after they get buried and compacted and then get pushed down into the crust, they can go through some increased pressure and temperature, so heat and pressure. And when this happens, that's when you can have a sedimentary rock become a metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks can then become an igneous rock when the pressure continues to increase as well as the temperature and eventually it starts to reach the mantle and become magma and under these extreme extreme increases in pressure and temperature the metamorphic rock will melt become the magma 
and eventually crystallize to become an igneous rock. So that word crystallize, when you see that, that is the process of magma hardening and becoming a rock. Because you gotta remember, magma isn't like a really solid material. It's like this molten, it's like kind of between a liquid and a solid. And then, um, this is very important. What, where does this energy that drive the rock cycle come from? It comes from two things. One is the Earth's interior is responsible for forming igneous and metamorphic rocks. So it's responsible for forming igneous rocks because our ongoing magma supply <laughs> is coming from the plate tectonics moving in subduction zones, which causes the mantle to rise up. So that's why we have igneous rocks. Metamorphic rocks are becoming, are come from the heat and pressure of the crust. And then there's the sedimentary rocks. The sedimentary rocks, which involve weathering and erosion, that comes from the sun because the sun drives the water cycle and also drives the density differences of wind. And all um, weathering and erosion comes from the sun. And these external processes are powered by the sun. So that's how you get sedimentary rocks. I'd like to give credits to Karen Contorno for the I Study So Much Magma acronym. All right, so for our last thing today, what I'd like you to do is go to the description on this YouTube video, and you should see a link, which is this link up here, learner.org interactions. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do this interactive rock cycle. I don't think that's really what's coming out of our mouth at that moment. Rocks come in cool color shapes and sizes. Okay, yeah. Anyway. Once you get this, you're going to click on begin with types of rock, read about the rock, start your rock collection, and you look at rocks, you add them to your collection. Eventually, you can get to the diagram, which is here, and you could start to test your skills at the very end. Type in your name, and then start answering these questions. See if you get them right or wrong. You never know. You won't know until the end. I don't know. I'm not really reading it. I'm just answering questions. All right, guys. That's all I got for you. Thanks a lot. And take care.